Welcome to the topic lecture on how we use genetics as an experimental tool for research. Here are the objectives for this chapter. Please let me know if you need help with any of these objectives. In this lecture, we are going to discuss several experimental techniques that build on the knowledge we have gained from the previous two topics. One of the key techniques utilized in genetic research is random mutagenesis. In this process, a normal sequence is exposed to a mutagen and a large variety of mutations are made. This technique is a bit cumbersome in that a large variety of mutations are created all at once and all of these changes must be traced. This technique is generally used in fruit flies or other organisms that reproduce quickly and produce a large amount of offspring. This allows for someone to quickly see which mutation produces which phenotype. Mutagenesis is helpful in organisms where you can see many generations in a short period of time. This obviously doesn't work for humans, where you have to wait about 20 years for each generation. Instead, we can use genetic screens of human cells to help identify the mutant cells and try to figure out what genes have been mutated compared to a wild-type cell. However, there are many roadblocks for this process. In order to identify the mutant, they have to be able to perform the basic functions of life. This makes it hard if you want to study something as foundational as a ribosome or helicase. Another difficult problem is identifying heterozygous mutants because the mixture of alleles can mask the effects of the gene. There are some solutions to these problems, such as using a conditional mutation. This is where the researcher can trigger the mutation to occur at a specific condition, such as temperature. This allows us to have cells grow to a certain point and then turn off the gene. Besides these compounding issues, discovering the source of genetic disease is made even more difficult because one gene is rarely the cause of human disease, just as non-disease phenotype mutations, unlike PC appearance, are not always limited to a single gene. In order to determine if two different mutations occur on the same gene, or if they are on two different genes but performing a similar function, a complementation test can be performed. The simplest way to perform this test is to cross a homozygous mutant for one mutation with a homozygous mutant for a second mutation. If the mutations are on the same gene, the offspring will be heterozygous for the mutation, but will produce the parental phenotype. If the mutations are on separate genes, offspring will show a wild-type phenotype as they are heterozygous for both mutations. Sequencing of the human genome has opened up a new avenue of genetic experimentation. This is by looking for small windows of variation within the population. If you remember from Unit 2, if you compare two random people, you would see a difference in every thousand bases or so. Some of these mutations occur in large blocks, but the single nucleotide polymorphism is more common. One type of experiment we can perform is a large-scale comparison where we compare a block of healthy people with a block of people afflicted with a disease. We can then look for areas in the genome where the afflicted group all show similar codes and where these similar codes are different from the healthy people. By using this type of analysis, we can hone in on areas of the genome that may be generating the diseases we used to only be able to see phenotypically. Beyond looking for genetic correlations to disease, we can also use these CNPs to trace human evolution. When these polymorphisms occur in a large chunk, these are known as haplotype, and given what we know about crossing over, these blocks can be inherited and traced through generations of humans. The more haplotype blocks that are similar between the two people, the more closely related they are. Given the expansion and re regionalism of our ancestors, these blocks can help us track migration patterns of our earliest ancestors. This is the end of this topic lecture. Let me know if you have any questions about it.